Hello, my name is Dustin White, and I'm the director of the digital design and fabrication program at Texas Tech University, and the designer of the Infinity Helmet, which is an event information platform that allows users to socially interact and share their experiences during an event, and also allows them to uh, receive event uh, information. So the project started about eight months ago while working with event organizers in Taos, New Mexico for an art festival. The art festival features high media interactive installations that are distributed throughout the streets of Taos. And the organizers have a difficult time with wayfinding, uh, navigation, educating the community, and making information accessible. So we developed a plan to divide the city into three zones uh, based on uh, installation typology. We then developed a strategy that would allow us to uh, basically distribute 10 different data points or hummus throughout the city that would all be uh, connected. Conceptually, the project is based on three ideas. First, my kind of fascination with the Daft Punk helmet and its technology. Uh, second, virtual reality headset. And third, the interior spatial quality of Anton Gaudi's Sagrada Familia. So we weren't really interested in how VR technology makes us look. It's kind of weird. We weren't really interested in a normal kiosk or information point. What we were interested in is developing a project that interacts with users and has users and uh, interacts with users and users interact with it. So a fully immersible environment, um, something that has very kind of simple uh, material exterior quality, but then reveals a radically different interior quality. So the technology behind it is actually um, intentionally simplified. We're just using basic iPads. Um, and this is to allow people to connect to their favorite kind of social media platforms. It allows organizers to um, insert content um, on their own, so whether it's app-based or website-based. Um, one thing we have developed is an audio responsibility lighting strip that's embedded into the helmet. Here we can see uh, the sectional condition of the helmet. So we're working with two different versions right now. So a single-person version and a multi-person version. Um, you can sort of see the scale of it and how it responds to the human body. Uh, one layer that we're very interested in kind of maintaining is this connection to context in the natural environment, having that natural condition infiltrate the interior. Here we start to see again uh, two of the prototypes in action. Uh, we can see the actual the magenta helmet being projected to the interior of the helmet. On the right, the cyan. <coughs> Here we see it placed into a context. Um, again, the material begins to respond back to that kind of color coded zone diagram. Here we see a user's kind of reaction. Uh, children really love this thing and we installed it a few weeks back. So how do we do it? We're working with basic kind of polyhedral shapes as a source geometry, uh, which we then work with dynamic surface relaxation software uh, that allows us to then create um, more tools uh, to break down the surfaces. Um, so we break them down into hexagonal tiles. Uh, we can actually control the resolution of the surface, whether it's large tiles or small tiles. Um, then we break it down into uh, further sections that allow us to kind of uh, accommodate the assembly process. So everything is um, fabricated in-house using digital fabrication processes. So we're using 3D printing, small-scale laser cutters, CNC machines, um, and utilizing these kind of flatbed manufacturing techniques for uh, kind of allowed to work with a series of uh, sheet materials, things like acrylics and plastics, um, wood veneers, mirror card films, uh, 3D printing becomes a means to uh, solve joint issues. Here we are in the assembly process of assembling 800 custom tiles. It takes about four days. Here's a reflection of the fabrication process. We're going to see it's kind of illuminated pattern. The audio response of lighting in action. And then where it's going now, because this is a prototype, we're very much interested in exploring scale and pushing the scale larger. So using vacuum forming processes. And again, we see it in the context. So I like the design quite a bit, and I'm from New Mexico, so that's some bonus points there. Um, but maybe I'm just at the beginning, but I just had a quick question about like the content of it. Is it an abstract condition that you're inside of, or is it just a visual one, or is it actually giving you graphic information? It's giving you graphic information, so the iPad is relating. It's kind of what the organizers need. So in the event of this kind of art festival, um, when they're distributed in zones, um, what we're doing is we allow it to kind of distribute information based on the artist's bios, uh, videos of the artist's um, work. Um, it also was giving people information about the city of Taos. Uh, so really anything the organizers really needed it to kind of uh, display uh, the information they wanted to present to people. So it's sort of four-dimensional directory. Right. So I, I, 
I think this is a beautiful object overall, and I'm struggling to try and understand this wonderful artistic wrapper that you put um, an iPad around. It's essentially the, the actual use of it. So how, how do you see this scaling not only in size, but actual functionality? Because the functionality right now is limited, right? Because it is an object, it is a limited experience, and I'm not getting any additional sensory information or, or having something meaningful happen. It's whimsy, and I think that's good, but I want to know how you're going to make it more meaningful. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's what we need to maybe work with an, an app developer, something that will allow us to uh, enable people to connect easier and share these experiences that they're having. Because I think that's what we want people to do. We want people in this large and event context to be able to navigate it easier, um, especially in this event because people, uh, because these artworks are distributed throughout the streets of very hard to find. Um, so how do we get around it? How do we experience all this? Um, so I think that's where we work with an app developer, uh, someone who can work with the event organizers um, and embed their information easily and make it more accessible. Being something outside of the festival that could be used as like an educational resource, or what kind of is the future of the content? Um, yeah, I think that's. I, I, think, I think so. Um, I think that's since we've seen it in action now, and it was actually just two weeks ago that we saw it in action. Um, that's kind of been the response. Is like how how can you <clears throat> basically start to uh, deploy them in a city, um, and because it becomes a very recognizable object, and it's very easy for us to change the shape of it um, because of the tools that we've developed. Um, so we think of kind of and how it shapes that we can explore. So we can make it something that's custom for the city that um, we're working in. So say it was for Austin, we could do something that's custom just for Austin. Uh, and then you could then go in and access information about Austin. What sort of reactions did you get in user testing? Um, mostly happiness. <laughs> and, 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 um, kid, kids were just super, like crazy about it. Um, they immediately just went up to it and stuck their head in like, every single hole that it had on it. Um, and it was really great, and so you had just multiple kids in it at the same time. Um, I think from adults, it was more like, what is it? Um, which is a, kind of a common thing. I think they were kind of timid about actually going inside of it. Um, so I think it's kind of getting over that. Uh, I think that's where the design maybe has to change out, has to open up more so that um, you know, it seems more accessible for everyone. I'm curious to hear. Um, What's your roadmap? Are you from the where are you going to be? How many of these will you deploy? What events? What kind of what, what, what's your roadmap to, to develop? I think it's uh, finding a better material solution at the moment, making it more rigid, making it more um, kind of element friendly. Right now, it's a, it's a pretty simple material, so it's going to be making it a plastic or aluminum is the kind of goal in a year, I believe. Um, and then, yeah, trying to find another festival that we can actually mm -hmm. deploy in um, whether it's um, an event like this in South by Southwest or more artists that are Thank you.